you called these games. I mean, it's a sweep, but it didn't feel in any way, shape, or form like it. JJ, in these waiting moments where the Pacers had opportunities, where did they fail in the ways that Boston shined? Well, turnovers for them at the end of the game were a huge problem in all these close games. But I, I just want to say this. For all this talk all season long, about the Boston Celtics and their late game offense and their late game decision making. Three times in the Eastern <laughs> Conference Finals, they get it done with big shot making. Derek White tonight, Jalen Brown. This has been thrilling for us to sit courtside and watch these games. Total team effort from the Boston Celtics. You can point to a number of plays in all three of these close games from a number of guys. They are a Team. Scott, can I follow there Please. a little bit? Just just want to make a point about uh, the 35-year-old head coach who's going to the NBA Finals. He took a timeout with about 3.38 left to go because Jason Tatum had picked up his fifth foul. So he lets him sit one defensive sequence, and Jason comes back in, gets a bucket, three rebounds, and a steal. And all season long, I've said a season ago, Mr. Mazzulla was thrown into a very tough situation and had to navigate it. And all season long, it feels different to me for him. It feels like he has managed this season. Well, you know, DB, what do they say in life? When somebody shows you who they are, you should believe it. I mean, Boston, this is who they've been. They've been the best team in the NBA all season. They've got superstars. They've got depth. And Indiana is new to this moment. I, I mean, I don't feel like the result is surprising at all. This was what was supposed to happen. But I just think the manner in which Indiana played so well for so long and then in the last moment sort of self-destructed, maybe that shouldn't be surprising either, particularly given who they were lacking in these last couple of games. Is that fair? That's 100% fair. And I felt like the differ differentiator was the Celtics have been here before. Sure. There has been a collective experience. Drew Holiday is a former champion. He made big play after big play. The MVP vote it, it was 5-4, I believe, between Jalen and probably Jason Tatum. Either guy could have gotten it. I would have. There probably could have been some votes for Drew Holiday had he had a bigger night tonight in terms of his scoring. But the strength of the collective has been what Boston is about, and I thought you saw that throughout this series. JJ, the value of, of rest at this point, and we might very well see it be a, a lengthy layoff if Dallas is able to finish it off. I wonder, I, I, I get the rest that is that is so valuable, but at the same time, this is a game of rhythm, and you play every other day. Like, now they're going to sit. Now what happens? Well, look, Boston has had other opportunities to rest during these playoffs, the week of the play-in game. They finished off the heat. They had to wait a little bit for Cleveland to get through Orlando in seven games. Joe Mazzulla has been here before. He's going to figure out ways to get them in competitive environments during this break. But I actually think this game, this rest is great for this team right now. Joe Mazzulla said this isn't a bench series. This is a starter series. He relied heavily on his starters. Al Horford playing a ton of minutes. You would assume Kristaps Porzingis has enough time now to ramp up and get ready for game one of the NBA Finals. And I would assume that I know you've got a busy life podcasting and things of that nature, but, J.J., I know you're getting some golf in between now and next Thursday. I know you're getting out there somewhere, aren't you, kid? <laughs> Listen, man, I, I, I had a pretty good week. I'm not going to lie. I played Camargo yesterday over okay. in Cincinnati. It's a top 25 Seth Rayner course. I played Crooked Stick this morning. I there played my home course, the bridge, on Friday. I'm getting it in no matter what, Scott. I love it. You got that Jones, that, that, that golf Jones. We understand that, but we'll look forward to you, DB and Mike Breen, getting back to their, their day job. Lisa Salters as well with the finals next Thursday. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you. I gave you the stat earlier, right? Games one and three. Boston in the last five minutes of both, so 10 minutes total, had the lead for 38 seconds. I don't know the math in this one, but it wasn't much. So that's three wins where it's been coin flip time late. I, I, we heard what J.J. and Doris had to say. I just, I, how do you explain to me how Boston's able to pull wins out of the fire and Indiana's just not able to get even one? Well, there was clearly a, a calm and a poise that Boston played with at the end of these games that Indiana did not. And mm -hmm. there's a lot, lot to love about the Indiana Pacers, and it's a big off season for them because, as the people can see, they're a lot closer to being in the mix in this league and really contending than a lot of people thought they were this big off season. But... The bottom line is all three of these games that they lost, obviously one got away from them when Jalen Brown went off. They weren't really in that game. The other three games, these are winnable games. 
Uh, in fact, if you want to say game one, that is a game they actually won that they gave away. All you have to do is inbound the basketball. They did not play with the level of poise that Boston did in those moments. And we talked so much about, well, who Boston played, and they weren't tested. And I said to you, for me, the, the most important thing to look out for the Celtics from the first two rounds was their response in game three after losing at home in game two. And in right. both cases, they went on the road and decisively beat those teams down, mm -hmm. Miami and Cleveland, and then snuffed them out the rest of the way. In this series, a little bit different. What you judge them by is how did they handle the winning moments. Sure. Right? They made shots. They found the right person at the right time. They also made great defensive plays. It wasn't just about Indiana giving the ball up. Mm -hmm. Boston forced a lot of that. You saw great rim protection in this game throughout the big block by Jalen Brown. Tremendous. And what it leads to on the other end of the floor, right. capitalizing on mistakes by Indiana. Right. Game one, obviously. Tonight, we'll talk about a play later. I thought it was a huge momentum play in the game in the fourth quarter. So give the Celtics credit. They did what they had to do in the winning moments and now here they are in the NBA Finals, and you got these two forwards right now that are absolutely a load to deal with. Look what they did tonight. 55 points combined, mm -hmm. 19 boards, 10 assists for the two forwards, and basically shoot 50% from the field. You can't ask more out of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. I agree, and then there's just the, the, the depth of scoring options, the experience, the, the fact that, and look, history never remembers who isn't available, but you don't have to deal with Butler in round one. You have uh, Mitchell's on the bench for Cleveland. Allen was on the bench with a rib issue, couldn't go at all. And now you, you don't have Halliburton, which clearly, I mean, there were times when we're looking at the Pacers, and again, all credit to them for what they demonstrated in this series. Yeah. But there's chunks, significant chunks of time, where you're looking on the floor and you're going, Look at who is out there versus who's on the floor for Boston. I don't know how you could reasonably expect them no. to win games. And yet, and yet, there it is for them to be had. They don't score the last 333. So, nut jobs like me that are watching all these teams all year right, know a lot about this team. But I think a lot of people that were watching this series have gained a lot of respect for the Indiana Pacers. Without and What question. they have been all about all season. They just got great connectivity and decisiveness offensively. It makes them incredibly difficult to guard. They put up numbers on pretty much everybody they played all year. They did it again in this one without their floor leader. Impressive, but also to be fair, you're right. All the teams that they played were missing key pieces. They're also missing a very important piece of Chris Porzingis, who we That's haven't fair. even seen yet, right? That's and fair. this is their rim protector and a 20-point scorer and an elite-level spacer. Well, and just, just think, that's just so gross compared like, <laughs> that, that the luxury of the, that many scoring options. Like, you got a guy like Drew Holiday, who is a winner and can guard the other team's best player and get you buckets. You have White that hits the shot that won this game, who's like, oh, yeah, he's a third guy. So, true, you get Porzingis back because we're off for like a month and a half. Uh, the finals don't start till who knows when. So, I mean... They're, well, they're clear favorites over whomever they play next? Uh, I wouldn't say clear favorites. I think it's going to be – I think that's going to be a little bit more interesting than people think based mm -hmm. on – well, look, we ex I expect Dallas to come out of the West. They've got to win one more game. But I think you're going to have, I think, a little bit more of a closer betting line, I guess, if that's how you want to look at it, in the finals because of what's happened in the Western Conference Finals. One thing I want to say about Boston and at the end of these games, and you just saw it tonight. Indiana got sped up, and it looked a little bit frantic on some of those important possessions. And I felt like everything Boston did, particularly on their shooting and their releases, were so calm. Mm. And everything was just so slowed down. And look, that's big game experience. I mean, they've been in these spots so many times. You would expect them to handle it in that manner. Poise is a learned behavior, isn't it? Definitely. No and, question. And so it's understandable that Boston, who's familiar with the stage and the moments, leans into that and they execute at a level that Indiana could not. And even though they were swept, Indiana earned certainly the respect of us and everybody that's watching uh, this series. They were tremendous. Sam Legler, touch screen time. Uh, the, the, the Pacers just couldn't shake Boston. Yeah. It, it felt like... If they could get it to double digits, maybe. They had chances, had looks, just could never put it to a place where it was close to comfortable. And then it pivots as it has throughout the series. Where? Yeah, you might never see a sweep, Scott, where the team that loses the series was in better position more <laughs> often late in games than the Indiana Pacers. I'm going right. to give you two plays. This one is a little earlier in the fourth quarter, but I just right. think it's a huge momentum shift. Right. And I'm not picking on T.J. McConnell. This guy has become one of my favorite players to watch. He's been sensational throughout the postseason. But this is going to involve him. This is a nine-point game. They're playing great right here. 8.40 to go. Here comes that pace we always talk about. Advance the ball up the floor. 
and they're in a good spot. You got Pascal Siakam on Derek White in the post. Probably going to get something good. Miles Turner is going to run over here to the corner, which is going to drag Al Horford with him. He's worried about that three-point shooting. But here's what you focus on. Take a look right here at Drew Holiday. He's just going to take a peek. Let's see what's going on in there. And watch T.J. McConnell. Cuts right behind him, right down the lane, right to the rim. Right, going to go up 11? No. Misses the layup. That's a huge play. You go up double digits. Instead, we come the other way. Indiana actually defends this pretty well in transition. They match up really well, but you just go up. And instead of a layup that you missed to go up 11, you get a hand-on-hand -hand contested three up one pass in the corner that Jalen Brown makes. Instead of 11, it is six. You see T.J. McConnell bent over. He knows the significance. Now, late game. This is really important. Indiana would love to be able to switch this ball screen that's going to come. And to do that, what you would love to see is Pascal Siakam involved with the screener. So what it looks like Boston's about to do, watch Al Horford. He starts to come up here, mm -hmm. and Siakam's going to jump out, which is going to be great. Now Siakam can switch on to Jalen Brown, and then you're going to get Drew Holiday. He's gonna pe it looks like he's going to peel out, and Miles Turner now could be under the rim. That's what it looks like is going to happen. Watch the recognition on the part of Drew Holiday. Right there. He sees it, so he reverses course because now he's got Turner on him. So now he is going to come out here and set the screen. This is Miles Turner right here. He now has to chase out, and that's going to create a switch with a center. And watch why that's a problem for Indiana. Jalen Brown comes off, and right there, he's going to hit him with this crossover. And you can see, this is just too hard to ask for a 6'11 guy. Both feet, his head, everything is in this direction on this crossover. So now Jalen Brown gets back into the middle of the floor. Take a look at the weak side. you got two shooters, Jason Tatum, Derek White. And the reaction, obviously, defensively by these two guys are going to react to the basketball. And now you've got a kick out to the corner. This is the biggest play of the game. It's tied 48 seconds, all because Boston recognized who Turner was guarding. They targeted him to get into the ball screen. Indiana couldn't react in time. You get a breakdown off the dribble and a wide open three biggest shot of the game. And we talked about Boston's poise with big shot making. Derek White looked like he was in a gym by himself. That's how slow he shot it, despite the fact it was a contested shot because they're just so used to playing in these situations, nobody was going to speed up. That's just such a great a example of the, of the fractional difference, right? The minute little nuance in, in a sequence that leads to a series deciding three, which is ultimately what it right. was. And that illustrates what Boston was able to do. And this is something we discussed a little bit earlier. And the last three and a half, it's just so symbolic of, of Indiana's inability. Like when they look back specifically, and we heard Rick Carlisle very thoughtful as he always is and measured. There's a long list of things they're kicking themselves about. Where does it start? when they look back at the end games of these one, three, and four? It's absolutely going to be quality of possessions on their offensive end, more so even than not getting stops because their offense mm -hmm. and the issues that they had offensively with turnovers, missed shots, speeding up too much, you know, something basic like inbounding the basketball back in game one where you make a free throw and you win the game. That's what they're going to be looking at. Look, some of this is Tyrese Halliburton. You know, he was there for game one, certainly at the end of that game, but then he, he gets banged up in game two. They get routed. Brown goes off. Last two games, you don't have him. Yeah, that plays a part. That's your floor leader, but that's not all of it. That doesn't explain all of it and some of the decision-making late. It's, it's so tight. The margin for error is so small in this series, and it just felt like I don't remember really seeing a series where every one of those spots in the last two, three minutes Incredible. of a game, Boston jumped on. They were yeah. given opportunities, and then they cashed in. Indiana, like I said, so much to like. Yep. It's an important offseason for them to figure out how do you improve around the margins. A team mm -hmm. that is going to be in the mix now in the Eastern Conference going forward because they have found a style and they understand. Commit to it. Very difficult to defend. Now we've got to be better at closing out games and just be smarter down the stretch. It's a young team going through it for the first time. They were a blast to watch all year. And let the record show that they were sexy enough for us to talk about on this show. We talked about the Pacers oh, yeah. on this show. Okay. I just want to make sure, yeah. we'll make sure we got that in. <laughs> we did. You know who else has been great late game thus far? The Dallas Mavericks. And just they have a chance to do the same thing that Boston did, which is close it out. The difference is they're going to try to do it at home. What is most impressed about Dallas in coin flip situations and how they've managed to execute when the game is there to be had. Well, having two guys that can beat you on every different platform, right. that's what it comes down to, right? Yeah. There is no matchup for 
Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic, that's an advantage for the defense. There is no matchup in this series where you think, like, this is exactly what we wanted. We got him hemmed him. Even if you want to go ahead and blitz somebody, get it out of their hands, the way that they get it out to the weak side and the number of big shots that the role players are making right now. But it really comes down to them operating in a space one-on-one -on -one, when it looks like they've got an elite-level athlete defender on them and they know exactly how they want to work them to get the shot they want. And, look, these are difficult shots. Don't get me wrong. Some of the shots that they made in the fourth quarter of that game, I mean, three of them, Luka fell down twice fading away. Kyrie falls yeah. down in the Outrageous corner. Shot Wait, three maybe. guys, three yeah. times they end up on their back making jump shots. These are tough shots. But for those guys operating in the space they are right now with the confidence level they have, they really aren't that difficult for Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. They have the answer, Scott, with those two players for anything they're going to see defensively. That's been the difference in the series. And they have an opportunity to close that out tomorrow. The finals don't start until June the 6th. So there's a, there's a significant chunk of time in the middle, certainly for Boston, perhaps for Dallas as well.